Hello everybody, I'm Marco D'Ambros and this is a quick focus on how to do a visual debugging in uh, Bifrost. So, we watched in the previous video the watch point and the dump object and it's full. We're going to, to see today the, uh, a series of nodes called scope. These are uh, nodes made for diagnostic and visualized data. So, in this case, the point, also, uh, point scope is going to visualize the points uh, in a particular array. So, what it needs, it needs to be connected to the an object. So in this case, we are using our output mesh, and of course, if we don't um, if we don't connect this one to any output, it's not being triggered. Uh, I kind of like I mentioned in the dump node, we can use the output. So like you see now, our visualize. I don't like going this way just because I don't want to create any extra um, any extra uh, output attribute in our node. But we can use the terminal plus on the visualiz visualization data like this one is the terminal give us like an, an extra feature there are the visual the visualization attribute here so you can disable and enable uh, the denoxy proxy and final um, status there uh, so for example let's change some uh, value here so the point scope can change the to sphere i do prefer sphere then this could just a preference the size this is a rgb color so we can we want if we want for example red we can zero zero and we have to change this one in color. Cool. So at the moment, we are literally visualize the same data output here. So it's not really a thing. Uh, let's do an extra, an extra baby step. So now we want to visualize this array of data. So these are our, our vector, our point vector. So we can use the node called construct point. This allows us to connect uh, an array of vector and build a point from that. Of course, you don't see any change because this is, this is the same vector that we are given in our set properties, but just to show you how to do that. So let's do like an extra step now. Let's, uh, let's do like a filtering of, um, of an array. So you're probably going to see this, uh, similar steps, a similar logic on, uh, on the optimization video that I'm going to publish. Uh, so you're going to see probably uh, in the near future. Uh, so we want to select only the vectors, for example, then uh, are they're moving so that the one that we want to compute uh, so in this case when we have a base on target are all the vertexes that are different from our base so of course we can use equal and compare the two the two vertexes uh, positions so if the two vertices are equal we can say that uh, they're not moving it I do not like this approach just because sometimes there is like a small tolerance that you want to avoid. So what I usually go, I use this tolerance. So I create like, I use the vertex, uh, the vertex delta that we already have. I get the length of every delta. And now let's create uh, our tolerance. 0 0.001. Uh, we can say then if, um, the length is greater than our tolerance, it's mean are different. And in this case, we want to uh, compute in case of optimization or uh, visualize in case of this example at the back. So now then we have this list of true false, depends which vector are greater or not. We can use find all in array. Uh, this, this node accept an array list like this output the node then the value that we want to check if is uh, true so in this case sorry in this case it's true because it's boolean but it can be any value um so if this condition is true it's going to filter it just that vertex uh vertices uh so now then we have this list of vertices we want to compute the great get from array so let's select the array that we want to get this value but we select the index that we want to have it and in this way, now we are filtering a just bunch of array. Like you say, like I say, now we have just the two ones that are moving inside our scene. Um, we can even use the watch point to not to check them. We're moving from eight vertex here to the sides to here. Uh, everything is live, so if I select our vertices and I move it, you know, another, we, we see now the color there, we see the sets increase there as well. Everything is fine. Uh, like a, like what I mentioned, um, if you, for example, this one here, we create compound, 
uh, one of the cool things about the terminal, they inherit the compound inherit the visualization uh, option here. So we can still um, enable disable visualization even after the compound. So uh, let's do another example and use, for example, the scope. Oh, uh, we can use the location. So location, uh, of course, you print location. Um, and the location data you can find on closest mesh on the right cast. Let's use the right cast. Connect the right cast. Uh, what we want to do now, we want to use the proxy so we can see the switch between the proxy and the agnostic. Uh, for the ray cast, we need a mesh, of course. So let's create uh, the sphere, for example. We need, so we want to input this mesh inside our system. Uh, what with the request, what we can do, we can get the normal for every vertex as array and the vertex per se position as the base of our array. So we, for every vertex, we want to cast array on the normal direction. So let's get point position and get point normal, let's connect it in mesh ray. Uh, we can bring our mesh inside the system. So just go for world mesh, connect to in ray. So these are gonna, are not gonna be our position in direction. And even for the visualization, we can just do that as well here. It's not really necessary, but if you want to see all the, I'm going to show you all the all the different options. It's better to have the same connection. So now we want to connect the mesh, and the mesh is gonna be our output mesh, for example. Geometry. Sorry. So let's connect here, and let's connect there. The last step, just connect to the proxy. Now we can see the small, the small uh, array here. Uh, there is no, uh, even if you see there is a, okay, so now we have a collision, so we can find it in our um, mesh. So we can see the arrows from the, uh, from the vertex, the direction, and the collision. Uh, in the same way that a point scope, you have some options, so you can draw or not the ray. Uh, you can draw the the circle from where the power ray start and where it does collide, if it does. And of course, the arrow, like we saw before. Uh, we can change the sides, and these are just the sides of the arrays. Um, like I say, this one is uh, help us to visualize a lot different, um, different the, the three different options. So we can, you know, diagnostic. So we are moving the sphere, proxy. We're moving the arrows, and then final we don't have anything. And that's it. Uh, this is everything about the visual debugging. Thank you very much for watching, and catch up next time.